Well, people, as I promised you, we'll have another guest. So it's my privilege to welcome Bina Lakshmi, who's a founder member of Control Arms Foundation, and she's also a founder of Manipur Women Gun Survivors Network. So I take this opportunity of welcoming you to the show. Thank you. Uh, right now, let me bring in Bina into the discussion. So, Bina, as we are talking about these women in the conflict zone, as to when they are facing situations like these. Now, we have seen that Northeast has also been uh, quite disturbed from time to time. So, what is the situation that women find themselves in over there? In fact, uh, Northeast India is now the most uh, conflict-prone zone yes. in the entire country. Right. In fact, uh, 2009, it even overtook Kashmir hmm. with 445 killings right. in just the state of Manipur alone. Mm. More than 50,000 people have died in this conflict in the last 20 years. Mm. So how does women find themselves in that in the situation? Women in many conflict areas, it is 80% of the impact of any conflict is borne by women and children. That's right. In Manipur, every year 300 widows are created because of the men being killed in insurgency, in counter-insurgency operations. Right. So women have uh, in Manipur respond in three ways. Hmm. Number one, by being uh, survivors, what we call right. victims, right. all right? right? Number two, they also are in the field of protest. Hmm. They, they, uh, Manipur is home to one of the most extraordinary form of women's protest called the Mayra Paibi movement, mm -hmm. where women take torches in their hand because Manipur, like Jammu and Kashmir and other parts of Northeast India, has Armed Forces Special Power Act has been clamped, hmm. where even our right to life has been taken away. So women, mothers of Manipur, got together as Mayra Paibis, which means women torch bearers, okay. and starts patrolling the streets of Manipur at night, hmm. because that's the time the army come to pick up our young people. That's the time the insurgents move. Mm -hmm. And the third response <coughs> has been like women like myself, who have survived violence, but who have been educated enough to take this message hmm. to our people, to our local governments, to the national government, and even at the United Nations level, mm -hmm. that something needs to be done about this. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Definitely, the, the, uh, are being targeted most That's of the right. time. Right. In many conflict areas, and especially when political conflict is there, a perpetration on the woman hmm. is like an extension on the political space of the aggressor. Hmm. So women's bodies have been used time and again. Remember 2004, Manorama Devi in Manipur. Hmm. Remember that extraordinary protest where 12 mothers disrobed in front of the Indian Armed Forces uh, thing to tell, come and rape us. We are all Manorama's mothers. Hmm. Manorama was a symbol. Four army personnel came to arrest her. Mm -hmm. And a following morning, her body was found with seven bullets wound in her vagina. Mm -hmm. And she was supposed to be a bomb maker. Hmm. Even then, we are asking, why wouldn't somebody has been arrested? Why she was shot in, in such right. a brutal way? That's so for right. many women in Manipur, this was a symbol of a perpetration of not just arrest of a woman suspect, hmm. but the way she was brutalized in her killing, raped hmm. and executed That's is right. something. So this is something which we, in conflict areas, Dr. Nakbal had said, but it is very important to know that it is very complex. Mm -hmm. And we as women have to respond with a certain kind of sanity. That's right. And so that the men, are especially the army, or whoever has guns, mm -hmm. whether it's forces or the non-state armed group, right. they should be taught right. if you have a gun, you have no right to treat a woman with the disrespect that you do. That's right. So this is something well, we have to The filmmaker yeah. has something to add to this probably. Yes, no, I, Arya, please I was just uh, thinking about the fact that when we talk about vulnerability in these situations, vulnerability is of two kinds, and mm. she had sort of uh, mentioned it also. Mm. One is, of course, a vulnerability when you're in a situation and you're a victim, mm. and the other is the vulnerability of constantly being a suspect. Well, we all have known that women have suffered through the ages, but then we also know that women have also risen like the proverbial phoenix. So my question is to you, uh, Bina, that in spite of all that mayhem, in spite of all that unrest, we still have women like you who are so strong and who have such bold expressions. So do you, again, I'm sure we all agree with the fact that yes, women do have that inner strength which they can rely on. Absolutely. In fact, not just as women, women have, is have known, have nurtured life, they give birth to life. So women are the absolute inheritors for bringing peace. True. That is important to know. 
and how we have responded in Manipur is in spite of the violence mm. which has been going on for the last six decades and will go on for the next five decades because it's a very, very protracted conflict. Mm. Within that, we have to find the sense to live. Mm. In Manipur, we have set up the Manipur Women Gun Survivors Network where we work with over 100 women survivors who have mm. lost their husbands or themselves being shot or lost their child in the conflict. Mm. We open bank accounts for them and many of these women in many parts of India as well as in the northeast in Manipur, they can weave beautifully. The shawl I'm wearing is woven by them. They can do poultry, they can do fishery, mushroom cultivation. So we've given them basic seed money mm. so that they can start living because you cannot talk about peace, especially right. women-led peace, when the women have to feed themselves mm. and feed their children and to give that education to the child in whose father has been shot. Mm. So we have in Manipur, uh, this Manipur Women Gun Survivors, in more than four districts of Manipur, over hundreds of women survivors. Now we have a home in every practical village in Manipur because of that. Mm. And imagine if hundred to a thousand women taking charge of their lives and in this way we can bring peace. 2010 was also the year where the United Nations historic resolution on women, peace and security was uh, celebrated, 10th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time that the government of India, together with women in many conflict areas, as well as non-conflict areas, mm. come together and implement this resolution, both in the grassroots and the national level, international level, to bring right. that change. And, right. and this is what we believe in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, any final comments? Very yes. quickly. Yes, very quickly. As, <coughs> as my friend has mm. said, uh, she survived mm. an attack. Mm. Uh, in many parts of India, people are living mm. under consistent conflict for the last five decades. Mm. It's time that the government of India and civil society join hands together and resist that it is not military who will, at, will resolve this problem, mm. but mm. civil society coming together working with the right government policy and policy makers mm. unless the transformation is done violence will continue as long as people are poor absolutely yeah. Abina, I'll, yeah. since we are running short yeah. of time but i'm sure your yeah. message will definitely go to the right people today mm -hmm. and uh, well people i would like you to tell us as to what did you think of today's discussion for that do write to me at gdlstv at gmail.com so at this point i'd like to say thank you to all four of you for taking time out and for talking about such personal experiences with me as well as with my viewers. Well, people, in spite of facing tragedies, life definitely has to go on. Women in particular need to keep their sanity and depend on that inner strength that only women are known for. You have to rise like the phoenix, no matter what. So never let the flame of hope go out of your life. With hope, no matter how bad things look and are, peace, faith and love can shine brightly in our lives. So on that hopeful note, it's a wrap of today's edition of Gender Discourse. I'll see you next week with another engaging discussion. Till then, this is Lottie Allerick saying goodbye and take very good care of yourselves.